thing that that uh, that I really didn't talk about, and I was planning to do more with the scapula, is a scapular protraction test, which tests what muscle. So we should be able to measure that. How are you going to test it? Typically, a scapular punch is, is what they describe in the literature. In a seated position, I don't think it's a very good test because I think you're testing the abdominals and all the stabilizers and stuff like that. So I either like to do a wall position, a plank position, or a supine plus position, it's called. Right? So if I have him down on his back, in the plus position, people will do push-ups. When you do a push-up, that's to there. The plus is that. And most patients can't get it. I also like to palpate the scapular border. When I'm teaching patients to do a punch exercise, I feel their scapula. And most of them quit before the scapula disappears. In a good punch, you shouldn't be able to feel the edge of the scapula if they have good serratus control. So I can't really do both in this position very well, but I can get an idea. And I do both arms at once. Because if I don't do both arms, they usually rotate their trunk to hold again with their obliques or something. So is he all the way forward? No. Let's get him up. Touch the ceiling. All right? Is what we tell him. Then make a fist and hold him there. Keep them both up, and I'll do one, and then the other, and then I'll do one, and then I'll do the other, and I'll repeat that three to five times. Because the serratus is a muscle that typically fails over time, not in a single episode. And even five repetitions is not enough, but we can't spend all day doing it, right? <laughs> it's easier on you and I clinically to do it standing, so let's do that next. You have the patient stand from the, put your hands on the wall, and then back up a step, and then lean on the wall, and we're going to do full push-ups. So I want to teach them to do scapular protraction all the way in and back and forth, and I just tell them keep going. And usually around 10, 15 repetitions, you'll start to see something fail with the scapulas. And he sits up there. I can't see from my angle real well. Are you getting a lot of elevation from the scapulas at the end right in there? In his case? I mean, I... I think, in his case, you're getting medial border prominence, maybe some elevation. You can stop. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Medial border prominence is type to scapular weaning. It is the most common. So when he's just at rest, he is inferior border, border prominence. That's type 1. Right? Type 2 is when it starts doing that. You know, they teach you in PT school, your hands are your scapulas, right? So a type 1 is that. A type 2 is that. A type 3, which is relatively less common, and again, we're going to talk about all the causes of treatment for this, later on is when you see superior border. And it's a lot of times associated with nerve injury. But again, we're going we're to come back to that. Okay? All right. So, in his case, what I'm going to predict, you would you come around and have a seat facing everybody again. I'm going to predict some pec minor tightness with him. Real good article in Journal of Orthopedic Sports Physical Therapy on assessing pec minor and I'll try to get you all a copy of it. But the way I like to address pec minor evaluation, and it's not really on here, elevate, now tell him to relax his arm, okay? You want your distraction force to be in front of the humeral head and over more of the coracoid and the acromial process. Bring him up and pull him back till you feel tension, and then the pec minor is stretched by doing that. And he'll feel tension across here. There are some supine techniques um, also where you do a towel roll to try to stabilize and pull back. But if you read that article, that's a really nice way to get at pec minor. And it works. And they can feel it. I can't see his facial expression, which I like to do. You know, if I see his feet start to come up in the air, I know I'm really stretching hard. Kind of thing. This is also a good position to start your bird stretching too, by the way. I'm going to stabilize him here. Go behind his back into a lift-off position, stabilize his scapula, and pull straight back. And that's a very, very nice bird stretch. And the third one I do, and I'm getting myself all screwed up,
is anteriorly start in this plane of the scapula, go under the humerus and over the radius, stabilize the scapula, and internally rotate. And he'll feel posterior capsule. This hurts on a normal shoulder, so we can try it on each other. And then to increase the stretch, start walking him into horizontal adduction. Okay? So I'm going to come across here and watch facial expression as I come across, and he doesn't like that at all. And the more I walk him into horizontal adduction, the more he gets it. <laughs>